Hi everyone, so I'm back with another great off-campus opportunity and this one is with Seagate. So if you don't know by now, Seagate is hiring for software engineering interns right now. So this is a great opportunity for all of you people that are looking for an internship. So in this video, we'll be talking about the role and the technical requirements. We'll be talking about the eligibility and I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to get your resume shortlisted as well. So like usual, everything that you need for this role is going to be within the video. So make sure that you watch the complete video and then apply ASAP. And the reason I'm telling you to apply ASAP is that these days, a lot of these openings are closing pretty quickly. A lot of times they're closing one day or two day after I make the video, because the moment a company starts receiving a lot of applications, they will close their opening, right? Which is why a lot of these openings become first come first serve basis. So you have to be on your toes. You have to make sure that you're quick with applying, right? So whenever you see my video, watch the video, make the changes I suggest, and then apply ASAP. Otherwise, you'll fall behind. You have to be on your toes. And if you're someone who's having difficulty in cracking off campus placements, if you're not able to get your resume shortlisted, or you're not able to crack the interviews, or you don't know how to prepare for the interviews in an off-campus setting, then you can connect one to one with me, where I will personally guide you and mentor you and make sure that you get all of the knowledge that you need in order to crack your dream company in off-campus placements. So you can connect one to one with me. The link for that is going to be in the description box. All right. So coming back to this opening, like I said, Seagate is hiring for software engineering intern position. And this is a pretty great opening. It's a pretty great opportunity because Seagate is also a pretty great company to start off your career with. Especially for an internship, it is a great company. And all of you guys should always be looking for an internship. Especially if you're a college student, you should always have an eye out for internships. Why? Because having an internship in your resume is going to showcase to the recruiter in your future career that you have work experience. So when you go for full-time employment placements, when you go for FTE placements, internships will really set you apart. So what I will suggest, if you're a college student, try to look out for internships as much as you can. The company doesn't matter, honestly, even if it is a startup, whether it's a low-paying company, high-paying company, you should always be looking for an internship, right? That's why this is a great opportunity. So as for the eligibility, they have not exactly mentioned the years of experience you need, which is obvious because you don't need any years of experience for applying for an internship role, but they have not mentioned which years can apply either. So they've left it very ambiguous. So what I am saying, what, what I'm assuming, again, take it with a grain of salt, but what I am assuming is that if you're a final year student or if you're a graduate, you can surely apply for this, okay? Because that is what internships are mostly made for. If you're a final year student or even a recent graduate, like 2006 or 2005, then you should apply for it, okay? But they have not clearly mentioned so again, take this with a grain of salt. The eligibility is pretty ambiguous here, right? But I'll tell you what is not ambiguous and that is the technical requirements because they've been very clear with the technical requirements and what they want. So what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to make your work very easy for you. I'm going to give you a list of keywords, a list of technical requirements or a list of skills in the description box. So you'll find a list of keywords in the description box that matches with their technical requirements, that matches with their job ID, with their JD, so that you can put these keywords in your resume, okay? And this is something that I always suggest you to do. And this is why I always give you a list of keywords in the description box for any video that I make. Because you need to make sure that your resume aligns with the JD. You need to make sure that your resume aligns with the requirements of the company. Because there will be two types of check. One check will be for general ATS. Whether you have a good resume template, again, I'll give you a resume template in the description box. So whether you have a good resume template, whether you have a good ATS score, whether your resume is pass friendly, the grammar is correct, general checks. And then one will be specific checks, which will make sure that the content or the content in your resume is aligning with the content or the technical requirements that they have. Because of course, if they are looking for someone in let's say full stack development, and if you're someone who only has data experience, even if you have the best resume out there, it's not going to get selected because it's not matching with what they have. And it doesn't mat need to match 100%, but to a certain extent, it should be in the same direction. If they're looking for someone in data, your resume should be towards that. If they're looking for full stack, your resume should be in that direction. So the direction matters. It doesn't need to be the exact thing that they're looking for. Okay. So that is why it's very important to know what they're looking for, which is why I always give you guys a list of keywords. And again, in this case also, I'm going to give you a list of... <clears throat> And again, in this case also, I'm going to give you guys a list of keywords. Feel free to use it and then put it in your resume. Okay. But as a general suggestion or a general rule of thumb, 
make sure you have a good resume template make sure you have ATS score of at least 75 and above I understand that a lot of different ATS websites will give you different ATS score but bare minimum everywhere it should be above 70 or 75 bare minimum that is like the bare minimum no matter what website you check it on resume worded enhanced CV or any other website you're checking it on it should be bare minimum above 70 or above 75 okay that is something that is extremely important because they do check for general ATS as well so if you have any grammar issues if you have any repetition if you have any extra spaces or if you have anything that will bring down the ATS score you can end up getting rejected so the basic things you already know make sure you have a good template make sure you have a good ATS score and use the list of keywords in the description box and you can integrate them in your resume okay and a lot of times I see how people integrate they just put it in their resume that's not what I mean by integrating for example if I have written anything like front end if I've written react don't just write react in your resume integrate it in your projects integrate it in your work experience you need to show that you have used it if you write it under your skills it doesn't have any value because anyone can write something under skills but the project that you make the work experience that you have the internship that you do the hackathons that you take part in when you use it there that's when it actually has some value so integrate it the right way don't just put those keywords here and there that will not make much of a difference okay so yeah that's pretty much it all of these things will surely help you in getting your resume shortlisted if you still feel like you're having a lot of difficulty you can have a resume review session with me where I will personally review a resume and suggest you like what you need to change so that you start seeing results in off campus shortlistings right so yeah that's pretty much it for this video and make sure that you're subscribed make sure that you're notified of every video because like I said you have to be on your toes whenever I make a video try to watch it as soon as possible the reason I'm saying this is because these days openings are closing very very quickly today I made a video in the morning and after two hours the opening closed right and obviously that was because of a different reason because they were not expecting that level of you know results for any big tech companies they will expect a good amount of results right but still what I'm saying is that make sure that you watch it within one year within two day at max because after two or three or four days then the opening starts becoming a bit stale and many times they'll even close the opening so you have to be on your toes make sure you're subscribed and watch out for more videos I'll be bringing you guys a lot more hiring opportunities all you need to do is be subscribed and be ready so yeah that's pretty much it let's see you in the next video